Welcome everyone. This will be the last lesson of our differential geometry course. We will delve a little deeper into comparison geometry. Recall that the Gauss-Bonnet theorem told us that in the presence of positive curvature, triangles are fat, and in the presence of negative curvature, triangles are thin. The main theorem we will learn today is another instance of this phenomenon. To state it, we first need to define what is a comparison triangle. In a surface sigma, a triangle is a choice of three points x, y, z together with minimizing geodesics x, y, x, d, and y, z. A comparison triangle of x, y, z is a triangle x bar, y bar, z bar in the Euclidean plane R2 whose sides have the same length as the ones of the original triangle. That is, x bar, y bar equals x, y, x bar, z bar equals x, d, and y bar, z bar equals y, z. The comparison triangle is also called model triangle. Obviously, the comparison triangle is not unique, but if we take two model triangles, they are congruent by the side-side-side criterion, therefore the geometric properties of the model triangle are unique, for example, the angles. The comparison angle of the triangle XYZ at X is defined to be the angle at X bar of the model triangle X bar Y bar Z bar. In principle, there is no reason for this angle to be equal to the angle between the geodesics xy and xd in the surface. You can draw some examples and verify this yourself. Recall that angles satisfy a monotonicity property. That is, if a, b, c, a prime, b prime, c prime are points in the plane such that a, b equals a prime, b prime, and a, c equals a prime, c prime, then the angle at A in the triangle ABC is smaller than the angle at A prime in the triangle A prime B prime C prime, if and only if BC is shorter than B prime C prime. This follows easily from the cosine law. The main comparison theorem that we will discuss today is the following. Assume sigma is a complete surface and take XYZ a triangle in sigma. If sigma has non-positive curvature and is simply connected, then the angle at x is going to be always less or equal than the comparison angle at x. On the other hand, if sigma has non-negative curvature, then the angle at x is going to be always greater or equal than the comparison angle at x. This theorem is just another instance of the fact that triangles in negative curvature are thin and triangles in positive curvature are fat. I would like to point out the importance in the first statement of sigma being simply connected. If we take the standard one-sheeted hyperboloid and x, y, z at the same distance in the middle circle, the angles of the triangle are all 180 degrees or pi, but when we look at the comparison triangle, it is equilateral and all comparison triangles equal 60 degrees or pi over 3. So the conclusion of the first theorem doesn't hold if we don't assume the surface is simply connected. The case of non-positive curvature is actually quite easy to prove from the results we obtained last time. Remember we proved that if k is non-positive, then the exponential map at any point is a covering map. Moreover, we are assuming that sigma is simply connected, so any covering map is a homeomorphism. In particular, the exponential map at x is a homeomorphism from tx sigma to sigma. Take v and w, the vectors in tx sigma with x v equals y and x w equals z. Then take a minimizing geodesic gamma connecting y and z. Since the exponential map is a homeomorphism, we can lift gamma to a curve eta in tx sigma connecting v and w. By the triangle inequality, the distance between v and w is less than or equal to the length of eta, which by the proposition we proved last time is at most the length of gamma. Remember that from the definition of exponential map, the length of v is the distance from x to y, the length of w equals the distance from x to z, and the angle between v and w is the angle between the geodesics x, y, and x, z. By the monotonicity property, this implies that the angle at x is smaller than the comparison angle at x, finishing the part of the theorem about non-positive curvature. Now we focus our efforts on the second part, the one about non-negative curvature. The first ingredient is a local version. For a surface sigma, if its curvature is non-negative in a neighborhood of a point P, then there is a neighborhood for which the conclusion of the theorem holds. That is, there is a radius R for which any triangle x, y, z inside the ball of radius R around P satisfies that the angle at x is greater or equal than the comparison angle at x. We would like to use the proposition we proved last time. 
In order to do that, we need to find an r small enough for which at any point x in the ball of radius r around p, the exponential map at x is injective and has non-singular derivative at each point in the ball of radius 2r around the origin. This is not very hard, and I leave it as an exercise for the ones who are familiar with the general theory of ordinary differential equations. Now choose r small enough so that k is non-negative in the ball of radius 3r around p, and also small enough so that the conditions of the exercise hold. Then take three points x, y, z in the ball of radius r around p. By the triangle inequality, the distances x, y, and x, z are less than 2r, so there are unique vectors v and w in dx sigma of length less than 2r with x, v equal to y and x, w equal to z. Take a line segment eta from b to w and let gamma be x of eta. Then by the proposition we proved last time, the length of eta is at least the length of gamma, which by definition is greater or equal than the distance between y and z. Now we conclude as in the case of non-positive curvature. The length of v equals the distance from x to y, the length of w equals the distance from x to z, and the angle between v and w is the angle between the geodesics x, y, and x, z. By the monotonicity property, this implies that the comparison angle at x is less than the actual angle at x. This finishes the proof of the local version of the theorem about non-negative curvature. Now that we are done with the local version, the problem of obtaining a global result from the local one is quite interesting and is often called the Toponogov theorem. We will actually need a little bit of calculus first. Take a point w in the plane, a unit vector u, and consider the line gamma of t passing through w in the direction u. It turns out that the norm of gamma of t is a convex function of t. This is very easy, but also very important. We just compute the derivatives. The first derivative just uses the chain rule, and to compute the second derivative we use the quotient rule. Since all we want to show is that f is convex, we just need to show that the numerator is non-negative. After cancelling out most terms, this is just the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. This lemma has an important geometric corollary. If we have four points A, B, C, and D in the plane such that D lies between A and C, then AB plus AC minus BC over AC is less or equal than AB plus AD minus BD over AD. To obtain the corollary, we take U, the unit vector from A to C, gamma of t, the line passing through a in the direction u, and h, the function a b plus t minus b gamma of t. By the previous lemma, this function is concave, that is, h prime prime is non-positive. Also, notice that h of 0 is 0, because gamma of 0 is a. Then, by concavity, h of a d over a d is greater or equal than h of a c over a c. This happens to be exactly what we wanted to show. To prove Toponogov's theorem, we need one more definition. Just like we had comparison angles, we can also define model sides. For a triangle x, y, z in a surface, we construct a triangle x prime, y prime, z prime in the plane such that x prime, y prime equals x, y, x prime, z prime equals x, z, and the angle at x prime equals the angle at x. Then the model side of y, z is defined as the length of the side y prime, z prime. This concept is very similar to the one of comparison triangle. In a comparison triangle, we copy the lengths of the sides, while in here, instead of copying the lengths of the three sides, we copy two sides and the angle between them. Now, there is a clear relation between this new triangle x prime y prime z prime and the comparison triangle. By the monotonicity property, the angle at x is greater or equal than the comparison angle if and only if the side y z is less or equal than the comparison side y z. In particular, we can restate the main theorem as follows. For any triangle x, y, z in a complete surface with non-negative curvature, the side y, z cannot be longer than the corresponding comparison side. To get more familiar with this construction, I leave an exercise to you. If we have a triangle x, y, z in a surface and w in the side x, z, then x, y plus x, z minus the comparison side y, z over x, z is less or equal than xy plus xw minus the comparison side yw over xw. This follows from the corollary proved earlier applied to an appropriate triangle in R2. 
The local version of Toponogov theorem that we have proven is that for each p in sigma, there is an r for which the conclusion of the theorem holds for all triangles in the ball of radius r around p. Now we prove an induction lemma that will turn the local result we have into a global result. The proof that we present here is by Urslang and Victor Schroeder, which is a simplification of the one by Conrad plot. The induction lemma is as follows. Take a triangle xyz in a complete surface, set L as xy plus xd, and assume that for all triangles ABC in the ball of radius 10L around x, such that AB plus AC is at most two-thirds of L, then the side BC is not longer than the comparison side BC. Then the side YSD is not longer than the comparison side YSD. What this lemma is saying is, if Toponogov's theorem conclusion holds for all small triangles in a large region, then it also holds for slightly bigger triangles. The trick here is, of course, to construct smaller triangles out of XYZ for which the hypothesis holds, and we do it as follows. Naturally, we can assume XD is longer than XY, otherwise we can just relabel them, and then take X1 to be a point between X and Z such that XY plus 2 times XX1 equals 2 thirds of L. The reason for this weird choice is that we want xx1 to be large, but we also want the triangle xyx1 to be small enough so that the hypothesis holds. Let r0 be xy plus xd and r1 be x1y plus x1z. From the triangle inequality, we have that r1 is less or equal than r0. Now let S0 be the model side yzd opposite to x and S1 the model side yzd opposite to x1. We claim that S1 is less or equal than S0. For this, take a comparison triangle x bar y bar x1 bar. By our choice of x1, both xy plus xx1 and x1y plus x1x are less than two thirds of L, so by hypothesis, the angle at x is greater or equal than the angle at x bar, and the angle at x1 of the triangle xx1y is greater or equal than the corresponding comparison angle. Now construct the z prime in the extension of the segment x bar x1 bar such that z prime x bar equals z x. Then the angle y x1 z is complementary to the angle y x1 x, so this expression is less than pi minus the comparison angle y x1 x, but this happens to be exactly the angle y bar x1 bar z prime. By monotonicity, this implies that s1 is at most y bar z prime. On the other hand, we know that the angle at x is larger than the angle at x bar. By monotonicity again, this implies that S0 is at least y bar z prime. This finishes the proof of the claim. We now repeat this construction and construct a series of points x1, x2, x3, and so on. If x and y is smaller than x and z, we construct x n plus 1 in the segment x and z, and if x and y is larger than x and z, we construct x n plus 1 in the segment x and y. We then define as before rn to be x and y plus x and z, and sn to be the comparison side y z opposite to xn. There are two cases to consider. The first one is the one in which rn is less or equal than two thirds of L for some n. In this case, by hypothesis, we will have that sn is greater or equal than y z. However, just like we show that S1 is less than S0, we can show that Sn is a decreasing sequence, so if Sn is greater than Yz, then S0 will be also greater than Yz, which is exactly what we wanted to show. The second case is when Rn is greater than two thirds of L for all n. In this case, the construction of the Xn's continues indefinitely. Now we claim that Rn minus Sn is at most 18 times Rn minus Rn plus one. Without loss of generality, we will assume that x and y is not longer than x and z, meaning that x n plus 1 is in the segment x and z, just like in the picture. One can check from the construction of x n plus 1 that x n x n plus 1 is at least L over 18, and since the triangle y x n x n plus 1 is small, the comparison side y x n plus 1 is at least y x n plus 1. We now apply the exercise I left earlier to the points x n y z x n plus 1 to get this inequality. The expression on the left hand side is greater or equal than r n minus s n over l because the distance x n z cannot be greater than l. 
to deal with expression on the right, we substitute the inequalities we have. Now we add and subtract xn plus 1z, and the expression of the right happens to be exactly 18 times rn minus rn plus 1. This proves our claim, and basically finishes the proof of the induction lemma. Notice from the triangle inequality that Sn is always bounded above by Rn. This means that as n goes to infinity, the decreasing sequences Rn and Sn have the same limit. This implies that S0 is greater or equal than Ysd, which is what we wanted to show. Now you can easily prove Toponogov theorem. We take a triangle x1, y1, z1 and set L1 to be x1, y1 plus x1, z1. If the conclusion of the theorem fails for the triangle x1, y1, z1, by the induction lemma it also fails for some smaller triangle x2, y2, z2 in the ball of radius 10 L1 around x1. We then just apply the induction lemma over and over again to obtain a sequence of smaller and smaller triangles xn, yn, zn for which the conclusion of the theorem fails. Since the distances between the points xn form a geometric sequence, it is a Cauchy sequence, and since the surface is complete, this sequence converges to a point x infinity. However, we know x infinity should have a neighborhood in which the theorem holds, but since the triangles are smaller and smaller, they will eventually enter this neighborhood giving a contradiction. This concludes the proof of Toponogov's theorem and this course. Certainly, what we covered here, the gauss bonnet theorem, the classification of flat surfaces, the Toponogov theorem, are just the beginning. You can go much deeper, and I hope I have encouraged you to do it. I'll leave a couple of resources in the description for you to check them out. I hope you enjoy them, and see you next time.